JJ, I want to be clear um, about something I've learned in our friendship, um, which is that you, <laughs> you're you're a, you're you're a sicko. Yeah. Like, unfortunately, you present very um, polished. You're well coiffed. Um, you are a professional, and you're f- nuts. <laughs> I think a little crazy is fine. A little crazy is fine. You know, it's funny. What has served me well in life? And sometimes it hasn't worked out. But what has served me well in life is this, like, balance of being even keeled, but also being a psycho. Mm. Sometimes that balance gets out of whack, and I've dealt with some consequences because of that. Okay, so J.J. Redick, if you did not know, was one of the greatest and most hated college basketball players of all time. He was the National Player of the Year at Duke. He was an All-American. He was all of that. And then he got drafted 11th overall in 2006, and he played for 15 seasons in the NBA. And now he works for ESPN, where he debates Stephen A. Smith, and he calls games, and he podcasts for his own company, and he still pays attention to every single detail the obsession right the obsession the perfectionism we were talking in the on the way in here about the perfectionism it served me well my wife and i talk about this all the time i'm like i can't change at this point because i've got a few (laughs) decades now of like it's worked you walked into this office by the way i want to make this clear um carrying like a half dozen suits four yeah, okay. There, sorry. <laughs> sorry for being imperfect about the number of suits you were holding to get tailored because I guess, I don't know, what? what the gotta, pants were a little off. Yeah, the pants a little are a little off. off. Sure. Yeah. Maybe it's not obvious to you as a, as a rookie doing television. No one can see. It's no like one can below, see the pants. I know. Below this table. I know. Yeah. yeah. I know. But, but, I took, but you I, know. I took one of the new suits to a game recently. I was in San Antonio, and I, ha- and I had gotten the pants altered. And my tailor is is impeccable, so I just assume. What a nightmare the pants it must be perfect. to be your tailor. <laughs> I used to say this a bit tongue in cheekly. Now it's just real. You're a media mogul. JJ is kind of like Riley smiling at that. <laughs> but it's true. You're sort of patient zero for these guys, athletes, who got into podcasting. And now you have a giant channel. And the name of your media company, 342, can you just explain in relation to our uh, discussion of your psychosis why it is named that? Yeah. Starting around my third year in the NBA, in the off season, every Sunday... Uh, rather than taking the full weekend off, because I trained uh, like a sicko Monday through Friday, two or three workouts a day, game speed on every rep, like it was taxing. And so I would take Saturdays off and early in my career, I would take Sundays off too and then get back at it on Monday. And I decided I I wasn't as efficient on Mondays in my shooting workouts because I had taken two days off. So I said, well, I I know I need the break because Monday through Friday is so hard. So why don't I do a light workout on Sunday? And that light workout, what it had turned into for the rest of my career every Sunday was I had to make 342 shots. 342 is sociopathically (laughs) precise. (laughs) How is that the number specifically? It's, it's, It's actually simple. So typically in a shooting workout, there's seven spots, the two corners, the two wings, the two slots, and the top of the key. So if you make 20 spot twos from all seven spots and then shoot five free throws and then make 20 spot threes from all seven spots and then make five free throws and then make three one dribble right from all seven spots and then five free throws and then three one dribble left from all seven spots and then five free throws, that adds up to 342. Has anybody called you Patrick Bateman before? Or am I the first person to, to break the ice? I hear, I hear enigma a lot. <laughs> enigma. <laughs> That's what I hear a lot. <laughs> so I want to figure out how your brain in this context 
processed what happened to you. Um, I guess it was May of last year now, May 2023, when the Toronto Raptors, did they call you and say, hey, would you like to interview for the job of head coach of the Toronto Raptors? Or how does that land at your at your doorstep? The people that I talk to within the NBA circles, my my friends, uh, some that were my former agents, people that I worked with that now are in front offices or co coaching staffs, like we've talked since I retired about the idea of me coaching. And and I think there's there's a strong desire for sure. So people will come up to me and they'll be like, oh, you look like you're having so much fun in media. And I'm like, yeah, no, no, it's fun. And there are great days. There are bad days too. There's some really bad days. I leave my place of work, whatever it may be, and I'm discouraged. Mm. And that's not a knock on anyone. That's just, I, I loved every day in the NBA. There were good days and bad days, but I loved every day. I was so grateful for every day. This is a new thing. And so I think you have to approach it with some level of flexibility. So it was like a Saturday and I got two phone calls from people that were just like, hey, Toronto wants to interview. Masai wants to fly you up to Toronto. Yeah, Masai Ujiri, president of the round. Yeah, and I said, okay, I, it sounds like a cool opportunity. I left that night, flew to Toronto, uh, did a full day of interview, started at 9 a.m. I left dinner at 10.15. I had first take the next morning. <laughs> I've now missed any sense of, of a commercial flight. So I actually took a puddle jumper from the Toronto airport. Unfortunately, LaGuardia, the customs had closed by that time. So I had to land in Buffalo. Oh, man. Go through customs and then flew to JFK, got home at 2 a.m., woke up for my production meeting at, you know, at 7.30. There's a surreal, I imagine, just mental whiplash from going to being at least briefly, inside of the inner sanctum where decisions are made that will then be debated by the outer <laughs> rung. And I qualify as one of these people, the outer rung of gas bags who traffic in absolutes mm. without access to the inner sanctum that you then um, had to contemplate, where do I want to be? There are a lot of intelligent and entertaining people in sports media. No doubt. I would consider you to be one of them. I hype up your podcast and this show all the time. When you were at ESPN, I did it all the time. You did. You I, did. I, 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 love, I love what you do. Stephen Asian Smith is what I call myself. <laughs> yeah. That's right. When you are in a locker room, a coach's meeting, you're talking to front office people, the, the basketball intellect is different. So this is not a knock on the intelligence of anyone in sports media, the basketball intellect is different. The, the people that have lived it, like Bob Myers is a great example of that, right? I think he's brought a, a, a different element to ESPN. Yeah, former GM of the Warriors, won all those titles. Was my agent. Mm, for, that's till, right. Until uh, I think 2012, whenever he took over the Warriors. But when I have a conversation with Bob in private, that conversation is deep in terms of the basketball intellect, right? And so a part of me for sure, is like, oh, that I, I got to live that for 15 years, and I miss it. Yeah, that's your tribe. A, tr a tribe of, 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 and I say this, again, lovingly, of nerds who want to nerd out about the craft <laughs> that is so specific in ways that, and this is the presumption, would bore normal people if you were to actually... Um, inspect it and scrutinize it in the detail that you want to. I have I have many jobs. We, we were talking about this before we, we went live. I don't here. know how you do all of that. I have truly. many. You're at that point. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have many jobs. I really like all my jobs. There are parts of all my jobs that I love. The thing that I have found that I maybe love the most is the 15 minutes before a game that I call when we get to meet with each coach. We get about 15 minutes mm. with each coach. I had a, one meeting this year with, with Joe Mazzulla. It just played the Philadelphia 76ers, and Drew Holiday had guarded Joel Embiid for 24 possessions in the half court, right? Right. A conspicuous pairing yes. of small guy <laughs> and enormous yeah. man. So I'm asking him about 
any confusion that they have in their schemes when they're not matched up by position. And he starts going in on, well, we had a couple plays where we had some confusion over switches because we had called 14, which is your switch in one through four. Drew is not a five, but he's guarding a five. So he thought he was switching, but we weren't switching 15. And I'm looking, (laughs) it's like, yeah, RJ gets it. Now you're doing some Dungeons and Dragons (laughs) It's like, when I roll my 19-sided die, I... it seems very simple to me. I'm just like, yeah, no, that makes sense, Joe. But but you bring up Missoula, and I want to point out that in your adventures, you're, you're maybe just a hypothetical um, wandering through this alternate life of coaching. Joe Missoula wanted you to be on his coaching staff, correct? Like he, he brought you in for a, for, for what? A meeting, an interview? I happened to be in Boston that weekend for a friend's backyard party. My wife was out of town. She was at the ranch in Malibu, which is this uh, wellness retreat or something. And I happened to be in Boston. I get a call from Brad Stevens. Hey, uh, I heard you're playing golf with uh, Austin Ainge on Sunday. Yep. Uh, you mind if Joe joins? Yeah, this is now the Celtics front yeah. office just having a foursome. He, he, he on got the, golf the job the day before. Training camp starts Tuesday. I joked with Joe, like, I'll never forget it. I can't remember what hole we're on. We're on the 11th hole. We're, Joe and I have now been talking for, you know, two and a half hours. Uh, I'm asking him questions, you know, what type of role I would have, what would I be responsible for, where can I help the most. I'm getting a feel for him. And Austin asked me, do you have any more golf trips planned this fall? And I said, yes, I'm going to Pine Valley, which is regarded as one of the top two or three courses in the world. I'm going to Pine Valley on October 18th. And the look on Joe's face. And I knew (laughs) as soon as I said it, I was like, oh, shit. And then I was like, Joe, when when does training camp start? When do you need me there? This was a Sunday. And he's like, yeah, training camp starts Tuesday. We need you there Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. And I'm like, <laughs> how do I make this decision? My kids are in school. I planned out my life. You know, it's like this is the it's scene. In the, it's the scene in the movie where you're in like you're in the jungle and they're trying to pull you back in for one more job. <laughs> yes. Are there other teams that have brought you along to any depth in the way that the Raptors and the Celtics have? Yeah, I, I've had discussions and offers. Uh, in terms of being an assistant coach yeah, and on yeah. a staff for, from a number of teams. Uh, how many? Uh, six to eight. I'd have to go through and, and really think but about that's, it. That tells me that people are like, JJ's going to crack. <laughs> <laughs> the book is out on you. He's like, look, you can get him on the golf course <laughs> and he's going he's gonna to say a bunch of stuff. But in, inside, they see it in your eyes. They see the that sicko just flicker <laughs> that twinkle when you when you when they when they talk about highly complicated switching strategies <laughs> which is all to say that clearly very tempting clearly you did not get or take those jobs and so what are you doing now in the world of coaching i'm coaching a fourth grade travel team in brooklyn <laughs> i mean i'm a professional it could be helping tatum try to win a championship <laughs> Instead, instead, I'm uh, I'm trying to figure out how nine-year-olds can beat a two-three zone. 